First of all, I mean, she's beautiful. <laughs> okay, it's late. I'm running out of gas, but I wanted to hop on here and talk about Facebook, why it was a high priority watch, why I was talking about the poor dip buyers yesterday, just blindly buying the dip, and just my overall thought process, why did I say it was exhausted to the downside? Hi, Elaine. Yes, new mic. Who dis? Does it sound good? I hope so. I should probably play with the settings a little bit, but... Okay, so before anybody starts asking questions about the Facebook play, uh, let me get through a few things first, okay? So obviously it had bad earnings. It tanked. And people probably bought the dip the day that it tanked. So like at 240 whatever. And then it drops another like $30. So you don't want to be that person, right? You, I mean, a $30 drawdown is a, is, it's a lot to sit through. So why do that to yourself for four days? You know what I mean? So once price gets down this low, you got to go back in time. Let's see, how do I make this big? All right. So price, you know, was already down in the 240s. So then what? how do you get your next levels? You just got to go back. So the gap was here at 235. From here to here, this area is a gap. So once the gap got filled and kept going, you have to look for other levels. So pivot lows, bottoms of candlesticks, anything you can find. So I have the 226 level, the 218 level, and the 207 level. I prefer pivot lows, like that's a higher low or a lower low, but it's a pivot low. This is a pivot low, this is not. But these candles are quite large. So that's an $11 move between this candle and this candle. So I threw it on my chart. I just want Facebook to be exhausted. And I don't care how exhausted. I just need it to hit at least one of these red levels. It hit two before we got a reversal. The other thing I wanted to mention was... I do not consider Facebook to have been considered a gap, okay? A gap in Sarah Strat Sniper's book means it, it has to open outside of the previous day's candle. So this still opened inside of yesterday's range. So to me, it's game on. Like, that's not a gap to me. So we know when we're entering long, we have we want to enter on a reversal. We're entering, yes, this is against full time frame continuity, and we know that we're just using it as a day trade opportunity, okay? This is counter trend. So <clears throat> let's, I'm gonna get rid of these red lines because my objective has already been hit. So I've hit two of those exhaustion levels. So now I'm looking for a reversal. So this is a two down because it broke the previous candles low. And then today we get a two up. So when we opened right here and we triggered uh, the previous day's high, that's your long entry. Now, I think Facebook probably irritated a lot of people today because this is when you have to have patience because sometimes they're going to trigger and run and just keep running, running, running. But actually, Facebook gave you a great, you know, hourly signal. So let's look at this because people got very aggravated because it didn't move for two hours after it triggered. And then let's even go to the 15 minute time frame. Uh, 
There's so much I want to say. Okay. So this first 15 minute candle of the day is also the first, let's make this one the hourly. So this 15 minute candle, the range is 227 to 222. So is that. So this is called mother bar problems. So we went sideways for the first, well, technically the first three hours of the day after triggering. So where could you have entered? You could have entered right here on the 212 up and had your stop here. And then as price went up, just walk your stops up. Um, and this is also where I talk about training your eyes and seeing symmetrical triangles because symmetrical triangles are a tightening range. That's your inside bars. So if you can draw something like that on the 15 minute time frame, that's what you're seeing on the hourly time frame. You're just training your eyes to see a tightening range. So, and a lot of uh, a lot of traders play the opening range breakout, which is basically what you have here. This is breaking out of the mother bar candle. Okay, um, let's make that purple and a little thicker, and we'll make this bigger. And we'll turn the volume on because I, I do like to see it. There you go. Okay. Do you see this volume spike? Volume, I mean, it's not necessary for trading the strat, but it, it is one of those things. It just gives you, you know, extra confidence in your trade. So there it was. There was the break. And then there's when all the volume pumped in. And also on daily candles, when you're playing counter trend, and we use multiple time frame analysis, you wanna also, if and also if you're day trading, you're, you wanna get your targets from hourly candles. They're great. That's where I got the 232 today, which was the final target. So I have a pivot high here. That was the first target, 228, 230 psychological. And then that was my, final target of the day to the room and you might ask why because this is a huge candle and i did not expect we would climb all the way up there which is uh the previous day's high as a matter of fact so normally on a strat trade your target is the previous candle's high but since this range has been so big lately I went with smaller time frames, um, more conservative targets, also because we were counter trend trading. Okay. Um, PayPal was literally the exact same setup, and it was an example of a trade that did not work. PayPal, I mean, you know, the strat's great, but don't be a fool and think that everything works all the time. You have to still have stops and know what you're doing walk it up, don't stay in a loser. So PayPal, same thing. Downside exhaustion when we hit 119.43, which, where did I? I got the 119 from May 1st of 2020. It was a pivot, a daily pivot low, a higher low. So this was the same setup, except it was a three, two down, two up. So this triggered and then did not do anything. So let's go into the hourly and look at it and see what, if you did enter in this, what you should have done and when you should have gotten out. So we know our daily trigger was 123. So any time you are below 123, it is no longer in force. And right here is when you got a 212 
downside reversal, which means get out, cut it. Now, if you got an actionable signal back to the upside, you could have re-entered. If you had a rev strat, a one, a two down, and then you got a two up, you sure could have re-entered. That would have been fine. But it did not get that. And, you know, by this time, Facebook had already done it and was like all the way up here. So I told the room, I said, just get out of it, cut it. It's trading right below 123. It's not doing what we want. Get out of it. Elaine waited for a 30 minute close over yesterday's high, then a TTO. Oh, that's great because the 30 minute gave two actionable signal entries right at the trigger. Also, let's go to the 30 minute. I'm glad you mentioned that. So right here, trying to make it really big for you guys. You had a one, a two down, but we're already long biased because we got a two up on the day. So we don't necessarily want to be taking this down. You know, today was the first day ever to be long. So there was an entry here, which kind of still didn't go anywhere again because you were stuck inside the first candles mother bar. All right. So you have a two down, two up reversal. This may or may not have stopped you out depending on how tight your stops are. Your second 30 minute two down, two up reversal was right here. And if you were patient, that's the one that worked. You hit all your targets and you never got triangled out. So you never even got a pullback or any corrective activity. So the 30 minute was clean, but it took two tries. Yeah, Elaine Bennis, if you guys don't follow her on Twitter, she's really good. Really, really good stratter. She posts really good charts. So um, I do not have a Discord. I play around in Alex's. Um, if you want the link, it's in my Twitter bio. God, I sound brain dead right now. Sorry. I had an interview after work. I've been trying to set up this Ninja Trader account, which has been a nightmare. I am using the new mic. I just want to like kiss it. It's so pretty. So like, all right, let's keep. So they asked if uh, on this 30 minute chart, could you drop down to a five minute and get an earlier entry? Yeah, that's, I mean, you can, you can whittle down to whatever you want. In this case, a five minute wouldn't have, I wouldn't have wanted to take a five minute here. It just looks yucky. What about a 10 minute chart is not something I use. Ooh, here was a good one. But see, I don't know if this 30 minute, it's hard to look back because I don't know if that 30 minute signal would have been built by now or not. But see, when I'm trading, I'm looking at at least four time frames. It's, it's actually like six, but what was another uh, explosive play today? What's Ninja Trader? It's a futures platform. The strat is okay for any, everything. Scalpers, swing traders. Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start my futures trading. I've made a trade or two in the past, but I'm actually gonna, probably try a small account challenge. I've never done one before. Chewy, did, did Upstart do something big today? I haven't even gotten to look at my tickers for tomorrow, so. This is not a trade I would have taken. Um, reason being, 
You're still stuck inside last week's range. Um, I mean, you gapped up. You went over two targets. And then the third target was like pretty far away for upstart. But, I mean, if it was just a day trade, sure. But that's not like a setup that I would have looked for a day trade on, if that makes sense. Why is it? Didn't they have earnings today? Why? Oh, no. 2.15. Oh, that would have been tricky and ugly. That first few 15 minutes till, again, the opening range breakout and breaking the high of the first candle. That's when the volume came in. I am not studying ICT. Alex is. I, to me, I mean, it's the same thing to me as the strat, you know, break support. That would be the bottom of the broadening formation. Go long. Fair value gaps. I mean, all I need is the reversal back up. Jose, you'll have to go back and watch the video. I answered that in the beginning. When it doesn't reach my target, I walk my stops up and get stopped out in profit. Oh, I've been trading SPY. And it sucks, too. Because I really wish I would have opened a futures account sooner, since obviously January was the month to trade. All the volatility in February is, we really need to close as an inside month so we can get a 3-1-2 set up. Otherwise, we're just going to chop around in the middle of this giant, giant monthly outside bar candle. Let me get one screen going. So, <clears throat> like, here's your broadening formation, however you want to draw it. Even though that's really ugly. And here is January, so that was the month to trade. I mean... This one candle was one, two, three full months of candles. You know what I mean? Like if you were to com candle blend or whatever they call it, you got that, that, that. So these three months, January took out in one month. That's, that's when the strat is amazing. This volatility, you know, we love it. We don't love this. We also haven't had a spy inside bar on the monthly since October of 2020. So almost a year and a half ago. And the last two, nope, but the last one was also a three and then a one, which is what we're setting up for now. <clears throat> yeah, Elaine loves her spy in QQQ. So tomorrow, we have CPI numbers, which, I mean, I don't know what that's going to mean for the market. I don't know how it's going to react. All we have to be watching is the price action. Um, I mean, we just have a little candle floating up in the middle of nowhere. I mean, the more than likely scenario, I'd prefer to see a two down come and fill this gap before going back up myself. So, I mean, if you're, if you're not trading right now, it might not be. You know, sit and watch. There's really not a ton 
going on. You know, know when, know when to trade aggressively and know when to sit on your hands. And now is kind of a hand sitting thing. See, on SPY, we had that two down, two up reversal two weeks ago, and we're not even back to the high of it yet. Almost. Oh, I see the naughty pattern on Apple. It's called a C and B, the C and B. I'm just going to flip through this real quick. I, I hope so much. It's kind of funny. My play, my play of the week pick on Stock Talk Weekly's uh, Twitter spaces was AMC if it triggered short. And it didn't trigger by one penny. So I hope nobody got into that short because of me. Because they probably are deep in the red. Yeah, I just feel like tomorrow's not going to be a great day for setups. Two up. Oh, what's the... Oh, Bitcoin. Two up. I wish I had played that. I had it marked for downside exhaustion at 41. We are at 57 now, which was 41% to go. Know when you're at downside exhaustion because that's when reversals happen. Chewy? Oh, I'm almost there. CGC. Oh. Chewy hit. So Chewy was a rev strat. I had Chewy for a short the other day. We got stopped out, in pro or not in profit. Hopefully at break even or a small loss. That would have been tricky because it did gap above your entry. It hit your target. It hit top of your broadening formation. What did you have on the 15 minute? Gosh, that just blasted, didn't it? You just had two up, two up, two up, two up, two up. So that didn't offer any entries. I'm sure the five minute did. Yeah, so if you wanted to play Chewy at the open and, you know, see if it gap and ran or gap and crapped, you had a, a bullish three. An outside bar. So they tried to take it down on the second five minute candle and they were not doing it. So we went outside bar. So your entry would have been there and your stop would have been there. And then it ran all the way up, hit your target, got a little bit of corrective activity. You could have re entered right here at the top of, or at the two down, two up with your top of broadening formation being target two. There was another, uh, add right here. Every little pullback, you know, is an opportunity to add if you haven't hit your targets yet. Yeah, C and B. The naughty pattern is something I renamed <laughs> the inverse head and shoulders. It's a, it's a boy part. So far, I mean, I just, I don't see anything that I like. Something's going on with DWAC that I don't understand. There was presidential talk and... Yeah, Elaine, go ahead. I just don't want to get flagged for being naughty.
C and B. No, I won't. I didn't say it. Elaine's going to type it for me. She must have had some red wine, too. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Lucid could potentially go outside week this week. I see that. So it's... I had to hit show. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so Lucid um, is now over the 50% retracement for last week, so it could be a potential outside week. The target would be 30.85. Sorry, I'm reading the comments. Ooh, Lyft liked its earnings the other day. Uh, let's talk about Marna. Marna is not a two, two reversal I would have taken because it didn't, it didn't exhaust. So it didn't make a lower low compared to that. Had we ticked down below 146.50, I would have looked for a reversal. But it did not do that. So if I'm fighting the trend, I need people, I need longs to be stopped out first before I get in and try. You know what I mean? Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Say Hey Kid. Nick Knack Paddywhack. Give a dog a bone. I don't know why I just sang that. Netflix. Netflix was another one I wouldn't take because I wanted this gap fill on the daily filled. Actually, whoops, I have an alert set for something there. Oh, it was the gap fill. <laughs> it was the gap fill alert. I'm an idiot. Oh, Neo. Neo was um, on my setup list last night. I tweeted about it also. I tweeted about the 212 reversal. I believe I talked about it in my last video or maybe not. I don't know. But that was the entry. That was the target. Yes, I know it gapped up above the daily, but you still had the weekly trigger. So the weekly participation groups, that's where their trigger would have been. And it looks like sh shiitake. It looks like you had a bit of a back test of the trigger. Yes, this was lovely. Even if you entered right on the open, you got within like two pennies of the target. You could have taken profit right there before that 26 psychological. But if you missed it, you got a retest of the breakout area. They tried to go 212 down, started coming back through, two, failed two, goes three, get in long right here. Right here, as this candle is coming up and being painted, get in right there, out right there. Bam, trade done, target hit. Why do I keep messing with my time frames? Sorry. <clears throat> Uh, futures are selling starting the new day. What's ES doing? Selling. So that's the flip. We, we talk about the flip all the time. So today, buying, 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 flip over, new candle, selling, selling, selling. So that's why time matters. Let's... Look at the hourly. 
Wow, look at that. We have not had any pivot low get taken out yet. You just have, this is just a straight up uptrend. Like, so you've had no like broadening formation type stuff happen where you take out a pivot low. I bet we will soon. Wow, look at that. Strong. Mike sounds awesome. Thank you. Beyond exhaustion? No. It needs to hit a new all-time low. Oh, well, now it's bounced a bunch. I have beyond exhaustion at, what is 45? Oh, 45. I really wanted it to take out the all-time low. Like on the monthly, we have not made a new lower low compared to this pivot and then compared to the all-time low, which I really would have loved to see. Beyond's been a great short on the monthly since right there. There was your two up, and then the next month was a two down, and then you've just had two down, two down, two down, two down, two down, two down, two down no reversal against you. From 132 all the way down to it hit a low of 53. That's insane. I should do this. I should do this more often, but I'm trying to get people... In the Discord. I can't give away all my tricks. Fubo. Where was I? NVIDIA. <sighs> Plug. Plug was really annoying this week. It just, nothing would take till today. Peloton hit one level of exhaustion on my chart, 25.85. And then you got a reversal, a 212 reversal on the weekly. And that level I actually got from the monthly that monthly pivot low way over there PayPal has more downside how come that 115 isn't showing on there we go so uh, PayPal might be a good short for tomorrow, actually. If you get a two down, I'd be targeting like 116. Oh, see, Rollbox finally worked. I had that on the list on that day. Didn't go that day. But it went the next day. And it already hit its 212 target on the weekly. Beautiful. <laughs> Beyond was the only meat left at the store during lockdown. Gross. Somebody asked a question. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I can't say. Ooh, square. That was a nice move today. Oh, you got a broadening formation too. Kind of 
kind of ugly, but it's there. Because you see this three on the week. I seriously doubt it's going to go double threes. Um, so this is a great example. I did not see this one yesterday. How did I not see this yesterday? What is today? Wednesday? So on Tuesday, we made a new low compared to that low. Just barely, but we did. Exhausted. 2-2 two, two reversal, go long. Actually, you probably, if you wanted like a super sneaky entry, you could have gotten long on a red to green move right here. Hoping you were at the bottom of the broadening formation. I mean, and then it took out that target, that target, and your gap fill target. That was really nice. I really didn't see anybody talking about square today. Interesting. Okay. I think I'm going to get off. I, I really don't like anything for tomorrow. There was one I said. What? Oh, PayPal. Yeah, if uh, the market's weak tomorrow, PayPal's probably where I'll go. All right, boys and girls, thank you for hanging with me and my new friend. Should I call him Mikey? <laughs> okay.